Tonight, outrage is mounting over the early release by the Gujarat government of the 11 men convicted for the horrific gang rape of Bilkis Bano and the murder of her family. The Supreme Court today, in response to a petition challenging their release, has sought a response from the centre and the Gujarat government. Will this finally bring us answers to a number of crucial questions that remain unanswered over the shock release of the Bilkis Rapists, these are the big unanswered questions before us. Number one, did the centre green light the release of these rape convicts? Because as per law, as per the CRPC, the centre has to be consulted before releasing convicts probed by the CBI. Now, in the case of the Bilkis, the men were investigated by the CBI. So hence the question, did the Gujarat government consult the center and if so did the center support the release of the convicts because again remember the center's own policy bans the early release of rape convicts question number two did the release committee rely on quote unquote a silent law the bilkis convicts or the bilkis rape convicts were released under the 1992 gujarat policy the 1992 policy has virtually no criteria on how to define early release. It's silent on that. The only criteria in the 92 policy is that they should have spent at least 14 years in prison and judging the prisoner's conduct. The Gujarat government's 2014 policy is much more detailed. It bans the early release of rape convicts. So did the committee take advantage of this quote-unquote silence in the 1992 policy to release these convicts. Question number three, was there a misleading quality to the early release petition filed in the Supreme Court? Again, just to remind our viewers, the convicts were released after the Supreme Court asked the Gujarat government to consider their early release in response to a petition. A Bilkis rape convict had approached the top court for early release. But his petition failed to mention the convict's link to the Gujarat riot. There was no mention of the Bilkis gang rape or murder. So was this, in a sense, a misleading petition? And finally, question number four. Where is the release order of the Bilkis rape convicts? Ten days later, there's no trace of the remission order passed by the Gujarat government. The committee which pardoned these men the head of that committee told NDTV, we do not have a copy of the order. Why hasn't the Gujarat government released the remission order in public domain, especially given all the questions around it? Tonight, we've assembled some of India's top legal minds to weigh in on, as I said, this story which continues to draw spiraling outrage. And I start with Justice Madan Lokur, uh, former judge of the Supreme Court who I spoke to earlier, thanked him for joining us and began by asking him, Justice Lokur, when you saw this remission, you saw these men walk out, 11 men, what were your first thoughts? What was your response? Well, frankly, uh, I was quite surprised, uh, you know, unpleasantly surprised if I may say that, uh, you know, because uh, the crime that was committed was, uh, you know, beyond uh, being heinous. It was gory, it was uh, horrific. Uh, these persons had been given two life sentences, one for murder and one for gang rape. Now, in a situation like that, uh, you know, to grant them uh, remission, I think uh, it, it's a little unfortunate. And now, you know, I have found, uh, you know, some mention in uh, some of the newspapers that uh, these people were also granted uh, parole quite liberally. So really, uh, you know, I don't know, it, it, it sounds very strange, you know, the whole uh, events, you know, right from the beginning until now, mm. uh, the whole thing seems a little mysterious to me. So the idea of remission, because of course there is always this concept in law that people should be 
pardoned and so on and so forth under certain circumstances. You are saying it does not apply in something which was so gory and heinous? You also have to look at the nature of the crime, you know, because here uh, it, it was certainly not, uh, you know, uh, punishment for rehabilitation, right? It was punishment for deterrence. It was punishment for retribution. So here you have to look at the crime also. You know, there are other uh, instances where theft, for example, you know, where the idea is to try and rehabilitate the person. That was not the situation here. I mean, there, there's no intention of the courts or anybody mm. that these persons should be rehabilitated and reformed and so on, right? They did something horrible and they were punished for that by way of retribution or, you know, in a punitive manner. So, therefore, the standards have to be different, you know, for mm. different kinds of, uh, mm. you know, punishment or uh, different kind of crimes. Uh, which I think uh, has been overlooked over here. Right. And also at the same time, the fact is that the, as you talk of the horrors, because a number of courts, I mean, there's been the conviction, of course, by the trial court and also the high court upholding the conviction chronicled the horrific, the very specific horrific nature of these crimes. Yes. Uh, you know, the Bombay High Court order, I mean, if you read it, it's <laughs> 430 pages. Uh, but anyway, uh, when you read the Bombay High Court order, you realize that, uh, you know, what happened was horrible, you know. Uh, for example, the bodies that were exhumed, right, they were headless, okay. So somebody had obviously chopped the head off. Now, who, who would do something like that, okay. Bodies were missing. Bilkis Barrow's daughter, three and a half year old uh, child, photograph was taken, but when they went to exhume the body, the body wasn't there. There was a child who was born maybe just three days earlier, on 28th of February or maybe 1st of March, the night of 28th of February. Uh, this incident happened on 3rd of March. The baby was two days old or three days old and killed. I mean, this, this, this is horrific, you know. Mm. So, are, are you going to say that, well, you know, even, though, even if it's horrific and all that, uh, even so many murders have been, uh, have taken place. Uh, the uh, Bombay High Court described it as a massacre, actually. And you say, oh, okay, for good behavior, I'm going to leave you, you know. Right. I mean, we need to rethink uh, this entire thing, you know, right from the beginning. But you know, uh, this argument being made that, uh, that the release flowed from a Supreme Court order which said that the Gujarat government should consider the plea by these men for their pardon and that it should be based on a 1992 remission policy of the Gujarat government which actually doesn't specify who needs to be released and who doesn't. So in that sense, it's open-ended and therefore that's a kind of justification for, for, for why they were released. Is that valid? You know, if uh, I, I have not seen the uh, 1992 uh, remission policy, I don't think anybody has except the persons who have uh, applied it. Apparently, it's not in public domain. But if there is no criteria that has been laid down in that remission policy, that's all the more reason why you have to be careful. You know, you can't say that because there is no, uh, you know, policy, uh, I mean, there, there, there's no criteria laid down, there are no standards laid down, therefore I can do whatever I feel like doing. I mean, it, it doesn't stand to logic, right? So, in a situation like this, you have to be all the more careful that are you doing something which you can justify at some point of time? Or is it that, you know, you have an arbitrary exercise of uh, power and to say, okay, you know, uh, I am the boss, I do whatever I feel like doing. Right. What, uh, but just in conclusion, Justice Lokur, what is the legal recourse here? Well, you know, I, I think I think the Supreme Court should, I have always maintained that in matters of uh, liberty, you know, in matters of uh, Article 21, right to life, uh, dignity, jurisprudence, 
in all these matters, the Supreme Court has to be liberal, it has to be proactive. Now, in a situation like this, I mean, perhaps, you know, the, the remission has created shock waves uh, in different parts of uh, the country. A uh, large number of representations have been made, not only to the Honorable President of India, but also, I believe, uh, to the Chief Justice of India. A mm -hmm. petition has also been filed. So, I think on a, on, on a technical ground that, oh, you know, uh, it's not the person who is affected, it's somebody else, you know. I think all these things shouldn't come in the way. And the Supreme Court should say, all right, you know, there, there is a problem, right? And if what you say is correct, that there is no, uh, you know, criteria laid down, all the more reason why the Supreme Court should look into it and say that, yes, in public interest, we will look into it. If it has happened wrongly in this particular case, we'll see if we can correct it. But certainly for the future, you know, uh, we have to look into it. So I, I don't think the Supreme Court should go on any technicality in a situation like this. All right. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Justice Madhun Lokur there for... Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. For, for speaking to us. Thanks very much indeed. Strong words there. Let's uh, go across now to our... Uh, other guests, uh, Justice Deepak Gupta is there, former judge, uh, Supreme Court of India, uh, Shobha Gupta, lawyer for Bilkis Banu, Lalita Kumar Mangalam, member of the BJP. Let me start with you, uh, Justice Deepak Gupta. Your, your thoughts, again, as you heard, Justice Madan Lokur, a similar question to you that were you also as appalled when you, when you saw the news that these men had walked free and, you know, were received with garlands and laddus. See, Sinvasan, I'd like to start with the caveat. Since I was part of the bench which awarded uh, some compensation to Bilkis Bano in the case, so I'm not going to comment on anything which happened before that. I'm only commenting on the remission part of it. Fair enough. See, it was a horrendous offense. It was a horrific offense. But uh, I, I mean, other than that 435 issue, whether it has been done with the consent of the central government being a CBI investigated hmm. case or not. Hmm. Otherwise, there was a Supreme Court order hmm. saying that consider it under the 92 remission policy. Right. Even otherwise, the law, in my view, is very clear that uh, in case uh, of any criminal offense, only the punishment of the policy which is applicable at the time when the offense is committed with the ply, it cannot be retrospective. Having said that, even if the policy does not bar what happened, the changes, I do not agree that there are no guidelines laid down in the 92 policy. Hmm. Guidelines are laid down, but unlike the later policies, which debar remission to persons who have committed the offense of rape, See, in the 94 policy and the act now, the, that debars grant of remission. Correct. The 92 policy was silent on that. Right. But there were other criteria given in it. It may not have been the very best policy. So I had said this, I've said this earlier, it may fall, it may not be totally illegal, but it is highly immoral, it is highly unjust. Right. Because even in a policy, supposing we come to the conclusion that the 92 policy does not have but then also you have to see the seriousness of the offense. Hmm. You have to see the nature of the offense. Hmm. And you know, when remission is granted, the when we sentence people, there is an element of punishment, there is an element of retribution, there has to be an element of re reformation also, in all cases. I mean, uh, in every case they must. But the I cannot believe that 11 men hmm were so identically situated that they had to be granted remission all at one go. Right. It cannot be. The remission policy has to be taken from case to case, person to person. Right. Even if it is applicable, the remission policy, I don't know whether it is, I mean, the court will now decide, but if the, even if the 92 remission policy is applicable, and which I prime emphasize I feel would be applicable, then also they have to look at other factors only, not that just because the uh, uh, conduct in jail is good, so just release them. I understand. What sort, of, what sort of signal do you think this is sending out 
when you release men like this? See, it sends out a bad signal. I can tell you that it is it's, it's an open secret that this very Gujarat government and many other governments have opposed the release or remission, grant of remission to many others involved in less serious offences on various grounds, including one ground which is taken very often is that if these people are released, there is chance of communal disharmony. Hmm. And you see the way these people were welcomed with garlands. I mean, how, how can anybody even uh, okay. remotely uh, justify that sort of action? Right. So it's, it's a, it does send out a very worrying signal. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Justice Deepak Gupta, for uh, joining us. Uh, Lalita Kumara Manglam, as, as one sees this mounting outrage over the release of uh, these men, and uh, so many even within the BJP have spoken against it. I, from what I understand, even you are uh, opposed to it. Do you think that there's a sense in which a certain kind of pressure is building up where the government, whether it is at the center or the BJP government in Gujarat, may think, look, this really is atrocious. We have to intervene. We, may, we have to find a way of reversing this. Uh, Vasu, uh, let me make my stand very clear. I had said this on Rajdeep show a few days back. And uh, I am not here as a politician. I'm here as a woman who has dealt with an enormous amount of other women who have been battered in life by various people or, you know, persons. A rape is a rape, Vasu. It doesn't matter who was raped, who did the rape. Uh, their caste, creed, color, nationality, all the rest of it doesn't matter. Sure. In this case, it was not just rape, there was also murder committed. According to me, the whole system, apart from, of course, the state government that I really, I, I, in fact, I think in that show I used the words, I was very bitterly disappointed by what the whole, the way it all played out. Hmm. Uh, according to me, even the Supreme Court should have thought twice before telling any government regardless of what a party is in power or not in power, etc. Right. That why don't you consider remission? These people, uh, I don't think, deserve bail. And this is my personal opinion. I am not talking as a politician. I've said this before. I'm okay, saying it again. Okay, but my question though is, that and do you think... if there is, yeah, let me answer it. If there is pressure building, then I hope it is there. Because this, uh, this uh, decision, whether it was taken by Supreme Court or the local courts or the, uh, the commission that was set up, etc., I feel is wrong. Okay. This was, uh, I mean, you know, to use words like horrific, terrible, all these are just words. Can anybody give back the life that Bilkis Banu had before this happened? Yeah. Nobody can, right? So yeah. then what are we talking about the lives of other people? Again, I say regardless of what caste, creed, party, according to, I'm sorry to even go use such strong words, it's like blah, blah to me. No, no, fair Somebody's enough. The, you know, so of course, it's just let, let wrong. me just... Yeah, I, so if there is pressure building Vasu, yes. I hope it is and I hope it that, leads to uh, some kind of know, change. Okay. Justice, no, uh, that justice is ultimately done. This is what the system is supposed to provide, justice. Right. In this case, it hasn't. Okay, fair enough. Of course, you're right when you say that one, that in theory, no one should go by caste or creed, etc. But in practice, as we know, in the real world, it's very different. And we actually heard one of the members of the panel that released Bilkis, who happens to be a BJP MLA from Gujarat, he actually said because some of the accused were Brahmins, it actually is a kind of justification Vasu, for their release. Again so and again. so I, no, 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 I'm not putting what. this, I'm not saying Me, you are, I'm, I'm saying. I'm very clear about what I feel and say. I'm not putting what this on. What happened is wrong. I know, I'm just telling you that in the real world, unfortunately, these factors become Unfortunately, a justification. in the real world, we still haven't learned to respect women enough. Right. Shobha Gupta... Women are always the low-hanging fruit and get the... the you know, yeah. they're always the ones who are hit first in any form of violence. Right. And that is very... Okay, very, Shobha that Gupta... That is also extremely Okay. Wrong. Shobha Gupta, lawyer for Bilkis Bano, uh, when we spoke last on the show, you said, why should Bilkis always be the one fighting her battles? Let others also step up. So today, this petition filed by people like Moyo Moitra, others in the Supreme Court... Uh, asking the court to reverse this decision. The court has issued notice. Uh, do you believe that there may be the possibility of some justice here? Yeah, good evening, uh, Mr. Jain. Uh, as far as to begin with, I'm uh, satisfied. Uh, Bilkis wanted, we wanted for Bilkis, uh, that she is told that you are not alone. 
and that is not all about your battle it's a battle of the society for the society has to be led and battle uh, fought by the society i'm very happy that people actually you there would be names always you know a had gone or b had gone but that's the representative of society have gone as a public interest litigation hmm. so to tell her to begin with that it's not always you would have to really go to court and raise the cause or to you know raise the issue for the cause so so far so good uh, also good for the fact that court has taken up it very seriously within a day time they have listed in the court uh had regards to the chief justice for that that he took it that seriously that he said he is retiring tomorrow but he got it listed today despite the fact that there was heavy traffic in the court for in his bench also and he ignored for the to begin with the objections the prim, uh, preliminary objections raised by the counsel for the convict right that whether the petition is not maintainable that these are the strangers coming to the court we have never heard about this and all those right. kind of things okay so okay so let's see then how it plays out as you said you're hopeful but mm -hmm. uh, thank you thank you very much indeed both of you for joining us okay and now we turn to justice ud salvi in the bilkis shocker the release of those 11 men now justice salvi was the judge who actually passed the order convicting those men into Thousand and eight, and he joins me now from Mumbai. Justice Alvi, thank you so much indeed for joining us. You were the judge who convicted those eleven men of the most horrific yeah. crimes. Tell us your first reactions when you saw yes. them being pardoned early, walking out of jail, and being greeted with garlands and laddus. Uh, <coughs> anybody who is who gets, uh, uh, I mean. who is tried for an offence has an opportunity to assail the evidence that is pitted against him then after ch this challenge is throwing the challenge if the, he is held guilty by successively right up to the apex court then the guilt is conclusively proved having been held thereafter it is for the state to execute the punishment and state also is authorized to grant remission suspend a sentence etc whether in the whole or part <clears throat> after considering the record of the case the evidence and the opinion of the presiding judge of that court and this is their right but that right has to be exercised judiciously after considering every aspect of the matter here what has happened is they had there has been a remission they came out and they were felicitated the entire thing in fact doesn't is not in a good a good taste actually it brings shame to the cause which the parties are espousing that is hindutva and also scandalizes the judicial apparatus of this nation which has been established by law that is the constitution of india so both these are uh, things taken to read together mm. they 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 shock anybody's conscience that is what it is So what is it particularly about it that you found shocking let's take it step by step one is the fact that they were pardoned early the other is of course the way they were felicitated let us start with the fact that they were pardoned early you feel like you said there is a remission policy and that is up to the state to decide whether to use it or not but you feel <coughs> in this case yes the gravity of the offense committed the barbarity of the offense committed that should have led to a serious think on whether they actually deserve to be pardoned early is that what you're saying so no 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 see <coughs> gravity of the offense has not changed what 
what it was in uh, 2009 or 1992 for that purpose remains the same in 2014. Mm. This <coughs> it is not alone rape, but it was associated. It's a gang rape. Yes. Where mob is uh, incited to do an act. Mm. This is uh, this uh, in fact blows the edifice of the democratic setup. Mm. People are turned into a mob with uh, uh, incited with such a frenzy and they commit crime. This is something very bad. It's not an individual which is committing the crime. And also the other important point you are making is that one of the sort of almost rationalizations of the fact that they are being welcomed is that you know this is for the cause of Hindutva etc. You are saying this is actually giving a bad name to the Hindu faith. Yes, yes. No, no, when you talk of Hinduism, you talk of uh, the women's <coughs> eulogies of this extolment of the virtues of being human, women. See, Tatra Naryas to Pujante, Tatra Ramante Devata, that is what we have been uh, saying about it. And here, something else is happening. Therefore, in my mind, it brings, it ridicules the uh, the great religion as well as it scandalizes the judicial apparatus. Thank you very much indeed, Justice Salvi, for joining us. Thank okay, you. Sure. Thank you.